Hi everyone, today we are going to learn about how we can count the total number of carbons within a skeletal structure. Alright, so there's only one very important key point here, right, which is that every kink represents one carbon. So over here in the first, the most straightforward way is to identify the kinks. Okay, and we can see that all of them have one carbon. So all together I have five kinks which means I have five carbons. Alright, then now we have to look for the rest of the carbons in this molecule. And we realize that there are two carbon atoms that are spelt out. So the letter C is spelt out. So I have two more carbons that are spelt out. And over here, I, I will need you to realize that there is also another carbon at this point. Alright, so at that junction, okay, at every junction, at every kink, there should be another carbon. So all together in this, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 carbons in total. So in total, we have 8 carbons. Alright, so this is how you can uh, count uh, to the, total of the total number of carbons easily. Okay, and so why is this skill so important? Alright, it's because... When, whenever you do uh, answer questions, sometimes you need to see how uh, whether there is a change in number of carbons, right? And that will actually give you a clue to answer uh, that question, whether it's a step up reaction or whether it's a step down reaction. All right. So just a couple more points. Okay. The first point is that um, it is easy to draw the wrong number of carbons. All right. It is a very common mistake. So uh, it's a good practice to count it at the end every time you draw a skeletal structure. And also at times there might be functional groups that are not represented in its skeletal structure. So in this case, this group here can be written as CN instead. Alright, so just take note of that. And COOH might be written in this form. Or it might just be written as COOH. So once you see this thing, just count the carbons respectively.